relax. It's ASMR. Hello, everyone. Well, as promised in my last video, I have turned the boredom of being stuck in my house from quarantine into some productive time to clean up my bookshelf and I thought it would be a perfect time to go through and show you guys what is on it. I know I did a similar video to this several years ago so there's some things that are the same and there's a lot that has changed. So let's just start at the top here we have the Great Books of the Western World, which is books that I've had before. In my last video, I've had them since college, and I have read some of them, not all of them, and they have been a great help to me. In my last big endeavor, which I finished up over the summer, and that was getting my master's degree. So. I definitely used several of those books, particularly in my last final thesis paper. So over here, these three books here are there because they are too tall to fit in any of the other spaces, but they are art books and the middle book here in white is the Apple design book that they released uh, about a year or two ago, I guess. So moving on down, we have these two spots here are comic book, graphic novel, um, compilations, which I've particularly gotten into. Over here we have magazines and periodicals. And these two shelves here are primarily books that I picked up for research for my master's degree and I've called them down a little bit since I finished up. Um, I made a lot of books that I was kind of writing about in a negative way and I really didn't want to have them around anymore. So starting here and these two sections are art books. This is more towards graphics design and this is more towards fine art. And I picked up a lot of these books when I was getting ready to travel to Italy about two years ago now. And so a lot of those books focus on Italian painting. These three here are primarily fiction, science fiction, space opera, um, all different types of things like that. Um, some Umberto Echoes and Neil Stevenson, some of my favorite authors. Over here we have history books, current event books, things that are kind of tangentially related to my topic of my thesis, but I only used a few of those, but a lot of these were very fascinating to read. Here we have some psychology books, um, personal human interaction, stuff like that. And then down here is mostly storage. I have a few books. I have some computer manuals here. Most of this is storage. So if you have watched my last time I did this several years ago, you'll notice that my number of books has definitely grown. I've had to move all of the storage down here. I had a few storage places up here, but the books have kind of taken over so I thought we would just go and kind of start up here and just kind of walk across and I can show you some specific books. So here you'll notice I have a set of CDs. I know old fashioned music format that it is but these were the compilation discs of the Pet Shop Boys. I've done a video on these before, primarily just dedicated to these. I don't know that I had the whole set. 
when I did the video. But we have please and actually and very and behavior bilingual introspection Elysium nightlife we have release fundamental and yes here in my collection these are all the ones that they have released under the further listening category and I have some other CDs back here I have um, Leonard Cohen and some local bands that I enjoy and then I have a They Might Be Giants CD that's fairly recent these are not the only CDs that I have but they're kind of the most recent or the most special ones that I really like so I have kind of kept them here on the bookshelf here we have um, season 8 of Buffy and season 9 I need to get the fourth book in this series but I have not gone around gotten around to getting that yet and then these are three graphic books graphic novels that illustrate classics of the Western world and classics of the Eastern world um, kind of starting all the way back with like Hammurabi and moving through into Victorian literature and stuff like that so each one has a different style very visually interesting and the writing style is good because they've used different people to do the writing as well as different people to do the drawing so here we have some other graphic novels this is Saga um, I'm hoping that they have another book of this out I really really enjoy this series and I'm looking forward to getting book two but I don't know if it's out yet I'm assuming that it is it's been a while then we have a series of spawn books um, I used to really be into spawn I like the way this is drawn um, I have up through nine I think there's also a tenth book um, got this mostly for the art which I really enjoy and same way with this um, hack slash it's a little bloody for me but the illustration styles and uh, the story is really really good I like the way it's told and I like the way it's drawn so here we have some quarterly magazines or if not quarterly um, periodical magazines this is Lantham's Quarterly. This is the latest edition that I just got in a few days ago. It basically takes a theme, in this case, scandal, and it goes through literature of the world, and it gives excerpts of the relevant pieces, either chapters or whole poems or short stories, so you get a good sense of how humanity has thought of this particular topic throughout time. And they have really interesting ways in which they present the art along with the text. And it doesn't go in chronological order necessarily. It really goes by thematic order so you may have something like this was written in 1500 BC and something in 1400 BC next to something from 1880 1818 and this is from 1999 so you can see here we have topics like scandal and trade and happiness and night and memory and climate and then all back in here is a whole nother set of the magazines and this magazine is called the baffler um, 
I really enjoy this magazine. It's very um, critical of current Western culture, but in a way that hopes to still see it as something that can be fixed or amended as opposed to just being critical in a way that has no real hope to it. So I always like a sarcastic, critical magazine. Back in the 80s and 90s, I enjoyed reading the magazine called Spy. And that was much more like a sarcastic, tabloid um, take on American culture. This is much more political, but it often has the same kind of biting critique that Spy had as far as writing style. And I really like that. So over here, here are some of the books that I used for my thesis paper. Of course, we have the Bible and the Book of Common Prayer. Um, very essential since my thesis and my degree was in theology and culture. So I've had this Bible for many years and I have taken many notes in it. And it is pretty well marked up, especially as we get to passages like this. So I like this having the wider margin because it really allows you to make notes. And I was also really good at writing very small, particularly when I was younger. Um, I haven't tried to write this small um, in a while. I don't know if I could still do it, but I kind of learned how to write that small when I was taking notes. So then we have the Book of Common Prayer. This one I just got for Christmas. And it is a, an Anglican Book of Common Prayer. It leads you through the um, Anglican service for baptism. I think I've showed this off in another video. Um, we have the Psalms and we also have lessons and readings for many different types of events that happen in the church. So these are special liturgies for Lent and Holy Week. We are currently in Lent now as a church, getting ready for Holy Week to come up, which is Easter. So here we have Ash Wednesday, and it tells how you can walk through the service. Palm Sunday, things like that. So I really like this book. I've used it a few times, especially now since we are doing our services online and we are not holding services in the church. So this is nice to have to be able to follow along with the service that is on YouTube. So the other books that I have here you're going to notice a theme, particularly in these first books here. Um, I've been very fascinated with the theology of Simone Weil, and so I bought many of her books. Um, I haven't read all of them yet. Um, they're pretty deep and very impactful, particularly for me. Um, this one I used part of called Waiting for God. And I have a bookmark in here somewhere. Yep. Um, and she talks about things like forms of the implicit love of God. And she was a social activist in the mid, early to mid 1900s. And she was an atheist and was concerned purely with social issues in Europe at the time. And she walked into a church one day and was struck 
by the overwhelming feeling of the love of God. And she didn't really know what to do with that. And so she struggled with that in a good way, struggled with it, questioned it, um, tried to understand it throughout the rest of her life. She never officially joined the Catholic Church, although she had heavy correspondence with um, a priest throughout most of her adult life. But she was highly steeped in the classics of Greek and Roman literature, and she often brought that knowledge to bear in the way in which she approached Christianity. And she never took anything for granted. And her assumption was always about the strength of the love of God and how it was completely different than our own ability to love and even understand. And how we needed help, not from the knowledge of God, but the love of God. And this, I love particularly this book, which is Intimations of Christianity Among the Ancient Greeks. And it is, I had to track that, this book down through Amazon and buy it from a used bookstore. But it basically makes a parallel between the Greeks and their mythology and how that foreshadows Christianity. I also have some other books here from some of the early church fathers. I have Origen and Palatinus. Um, I have this book here called Fatal Discord, and it is um, a book that focuses on Erasmus, Martin Luther, and the fight for the Western mind, basically the beginnings of the Reformation in Europe and different ways it could have gone. And then I also have the works of another early church father called Philo. I haven't really gotten into this very much. I thought I was going to use it more in my book than I did. So, and I also have John Calvin. I used him tremendously in my paper since it was critical of John Calvin. And I have on my channel, if you really want to um, listen to it, I have a four videos of me reading one of the final drafts of my paper that people were asking me to do. So if you want to go through and listen to that, um, you can. So let's go down one shelf here. Okay, so this is kind of a continuation of the shelf above it. Um, I have a little figurine here my wife got me when she was in Spain. And I have some old camera tech and some old glasses from when I was in high school. So here we have some more religious books. These are about the major world religions, Buddhism, Islam, Catholicism, Hinduism, Judaism, and Protestantism. And then we have some heavy thinkers that are more modern than some of the ones that are on the shelf above. We have Whitehead, um, Horksheimer, um, Hampton, The Authority of Reason. I use this pretty heavily in my paper as well, as well as Half a Truth is Better Than None. Um, I reference those pretty heavily. And then we have, of course, Plato, The Republic, The Abolition of Man by C.S. Lewis, and Meditations by Rene Descartes. So, that's pretty much the majority of the books I used. I probably gave away, well, I would say about half. I probably gave away about half that I either didn't use or didn't need anymore. They were kind of redundant. But these books are the ones that I thought were strong enough they wanted to keep around and reference later once my brain has calmed down. And now I have plenty of time to do that. So I may be digging into some more. And I'm going to slide over here a little bit. Okay, so this next shelf is 
primarily dealing with design. This is my Pantone book of color swatches that I use when I am putting a design together. This is a CD case of Marvin Gaye and the primary reason why I got it was not for the music as wonderful as it is but the design is a spectacular example of early to mid 90s graphics design that is influenced by the work of Emma Gray and kind of that sophisticated grunge with text that is squished up against each other is made much more for artistic reasons than necessarily 100% legibility. This is a wonderful example of that type of design and I, I really like it. So that's why I have that here. I saw this in the used um, music store and picked it up immediately before I really even knew what it was just based on the design alone. And speaking of Emigre, we have here a compilation of their works from 1986 to 2016. Um, their type specimen books that they put out. And it is a example of each time they wanted to sell a font that they had created, they come out with a type sample book, which kind of gives you an overview of the possibilities of that font. So they've used it in several different ways. Some of them are very formal and some of them have a lot of fun with the concept of the font. So I really enjoy that. This is um, ads from America in the 50s. This is a history of graphics design for rainy days. And it is a, a kid's book that kind of goes through and that kind of goes through and talks about the history of graphics design in different areas around the world and how it has influenced what we see today. And here we have another seminal work on typography, the elements of typographic style, which is much more of a textbook that goes through in minute detail talking about the proper way to set type on a page um, in relationship to the edges of the page, to the folds of the page, and to each other, or the other words and the other paragraphs in the piece. So I have another Pantone book back here. This is the Target design book that just came out. I thought it was much more focused on product design and it has a little bit of that, but it's mostly their clothing design, which is okay. It's nice, I kept it around, but it wasn't exactly what I thought it would be. So, and there's some other books here. Making and Breaking the Grid is a seminal work. Critical Writings on Graphics Design methodologies of art and design studies, theory and research in graphics design. And we have some type books way back here and another Apple design book that was not made by Apple, was made by somebody else. So moving over here, we have a shelf of more traditional art books. This was a bowl that we bought um, a few years ago it is made completely of telephone wire. It is woven in a very specific spiral pattern. And I found it absolutely gorgeous. So I picked it up to display. So I think I've gone through these books in another video of mine. So I'm not going to get them out and go through them in detail. Um, I may link that video to this one in the description if you want to go through and see what these books are about. So here we have the three shelves that are primarily 
science fiction or cyberpunk, some of my favorite genres. We also have some um, Leonard Cohen, C.S. Lewis, some local um, writers, local as in the East Coast, um, that I really enjoy or I want to read. This is the book I'm currently reading by Frank Herbert called The White Plague. Um, it is a much, much scarier version of what we are going through right now. Um, it's basically raises the question what would happen if a plague broke out that was pretty much 100% deadly and how would the world cope with that? So um, I've kind of slowed down on my reading of that as it gets a little realer. Um, I may pick it up later, but for right now, I'm kind of on pause for that because it's, it's pretty dark. And this shelf is pretty much science fiction, and we do have some William Gibson here, which is much more cyberpunk. But pretty much the entire shelf is dedicated to Peter Hamilton, who writes huge, massive space operas, which I really, really enjoy. Um, these three books are part of a series, and then this one is a separate book. So these books here, starting from here and going that way, are kind of all part of the same world um, that he's writing about. And each one kind of it takes the story further, of course. Um, and then these two are his latest, Salvation Lost and Salvation. And he has a third one that will be coming out later on this year to wrap up that trilogy. But he's one of my favorite authors as far as just pure, wonderful, fantastic science fiction that's kind of over the top and doesn't shy away from spanning multiple galaxies and planets and everything like that. And over here we have Neil Stevenson, which is another one of my favorite authors. I really want to find this book in hardback and these three books in hardback. This is his latest book that I just finished. Um, each one of his books or his series of books takes on a very unique um, premise. This is what would happen if we moved our consciousnesses into computers and kind of mirroring the way in which we say our world started. Um, and so the parallels that we cannot necessarily start from scratch, but that the way our world is put together is very much indicative of who we are and the two cannot really be separated. Um, we have some other Neil Stevenson here and we also have some Umberto Eco books um, Foucault's Pendulum, which is one that I finally found in hardback that I've been looking for. And then I just recently got his uh, The Mysterious the Mysterious Plane of Queen Leona, and I have yet to read that. So these books are more like current event, history, um, social commentary books. Um, this is like one way of looking at the history of Western philosophy. This is um, a way of looking at Western cultural life for 500 years, um, the year 1500 to the present, from dawn to decadence. Um, we have Lampham, who wrote Money and Class in America. He's the same gentleman that is behind the Lampham Quarterly. Um, we have the collected writings of Thomas Paine, um, a Peace to End All Peace is about the World War I and what happened during World War I that set up so much of what we are dealing with now, particularly in the Middle East. The Trial of Socrates, True Enough, The Age of Folly, which is another book by Lantham, The Empire of Things, How We Became a World of Consumers from the 15th Century to the 21st. So 
these three books are kind of running in parallel through history, um, just looking at it in slightly different ways. So I've read this one, and I have yet to read these two. So the rest of this is psychology books. Um, I've had forever. I think I covered these in my last video years ago. I don't think anything is new there. And then I just have workbooks down here for computer programs and stuff like that. So that is an overview of my books on my bookshelf. These are kind of the books that I like to keep close to me, either because I'm currently reading them, or I have to reference them, or they just simply make me very happy, and I like to peruse them from time to time. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and let me know what you think. What books are you reading um, as you are sequestered away from everyone else? Um, what books would you like to get? What books have you thoroughly enjoyed? Or what books do you think I would enjoy? I would love to hear about all of that in the comments. So thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel. I now have lots of time to make lots of videos for you all. So let me know what you would uh, like to see and I will see you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.